We don't camp out in the winter time. We're more comfortable inside our homes. <laughs> Uh, there's times I do think about our ancestors and how they, they lived in the winter months, especially when it's blizzarding at home. When recruiters went across to the European countries, one thing that they were told not to do was actually mention how cold it could get. No one wants to come to a place when they find out that the winter temperatures can be as low as minus 35 or more. So instead they would say things like, You'll find the Canadian Western Province winters very bracing. It's quite stimulating weather. Well, I said minus 35 is a lot of stimulation. Going right back to the beginning of time for the Blackfoot people, they were taught how to survive. This is the, the Bow River Valley. If you want to talk about archaeology, these hills are all littered with teepee rings. In the winter time, it gets pretty cold here. I don't have any wind breaks, so the valleys throughout Blackfoot country and different parts in the mountains, there were areas that were calm and protected. Right now, we're down below. There's a wind today, you know, you could feel it standing out there, but right where we are, it's comfortable and that's where the people would survive through the cold winter months. Ah, home sweet home for the winter. This is our Saudi. It's the go-to when you run out of wood. It's 100% insulation. Look at this wall. It's probably a foot and a half thick. With the sod on the top of the house, we're gonna retain a lot of heat and the small size is going to be easily heated. Most of the settlers started living in sod houses and they longed to be in a milled wood house. So here we are inside the ranch house. Now those houses weren't insulated. So imagine living in your garage. It was difficult. One of the things that they believed in was layers. Lots of scarves and mittens and hats. So essentially you were layered in as many layers as you probably owned some days. This would likely be boiled wool. It makes the weave a lot tighter so it's impermeable to water as well. And the buffalo coat, those were uh, given to the Mounties because it's one of the warmest furs that you can wear. This one here, it's a, a tanned buffalo robe. This one is small. The people knew the time when the buffalo would come together and they would have big hunts in the fall time. They were able to get enough meat to get them through the winter time. On the east side of the reserve, there were coal mines. So eventually our people switched from fire to, to coal. This stove would, would uh, honestly, you would likely put coal in it and the whole thing being cast iron, it would radiate heat all over. This would be the firebox. This is where you could put things to keep them warm if you've got your apple pie. But there's also stories on the prairies of babies being born in the dead of winter and you struggle to keep them warm. And this is one of the places they would put a newborn. Yes. Uh, to keep them warm, with the door open, of course. These people that came out here were, were undauntable. So, <laughs> give them credit for staying. 